G'day legends, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. Today's episode brought to you by our partners, Neds, that bring you our weekly Thursday afternoon episode with a bit of a new random topic each week. The next two weeks, we're going to get stuck into one of our favorite topics of all time, and it's never too early, but we are getting very close to origin. We're going to talk origin smokies for both New South Wales and Queensland, and today we're going to start with the greatest state of all, New South Wales. We'll save the other two-headed mob for next week but let's get stuck into New South Wales today and talk about the Smokies brought to you by Neds now you can go onto their app and you can follow along with the Rugby League Guru profile the About Even profiles all the boys profiles join our groups follow along with our bets if you were with me last week sneaky little 44 to 1 unit scooper which has turned about even on its head and would have brought you home a nice little chicken dinner last week so follow along with our bets this week and for the rest of the season Speaking of partners in crime, my 5'8", my Laurie Daly to my Ricky Stewart, my Brayton Astor to my Brent Sherwin. Oh, I love it. My Matt Burton to my Drew Hutchinson. Do you That's, like that one? I like that one. A little plot twist. How are I you, like Catman That's a good plot twist. I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm really excited about this. So yeah. I, uh, you really lit up as soon as we hit record and started talking about State of Origin, your eyes were. Yeah, I, uh, I love else. a smoky. Yeah. Love no, a it's a good chat. Smoky. It's a good chat to have for yeah. sure. And some of our best content ever has sort of come out of State of Origin Smokies. Mm. Ruben Cotter, Hopgood. Cam McInnes is in the picture this year. We spoke about last year. Some really exciting ones. We're going to go through the New South Wales Blues. We're going to go position by position. Some positions, I think there's guys that are genuine chances to play. Other guys are just fellas that I think have performed really well that I think will get a look but are probably a distance away. But that's the thing with State mm. of Origin. And all you have to do is look over the last few weeks, Kat. Like, for example, if Origin was three weeks ago, Mitch Moses and Nathan Cleary would have been unavailable all yeah. of a sudden. These Game guys changer. that are looking really deep and oh, they're gonna they're they're so far away. They're not that far away all of a sudden. Mm. Adam Reynolds is injured too, keep in mind. So it's a great the New point. South Wales halves could have been absolutely anyone. And that can happen at any given point, uh, with suspensions, HIAs, injuries. There is just so much that can take you out of games nowadays. Uh and you know, this is the start of the season too, mid season. Mm. There's probably only gonna be more injuries and whatnot. So Sometimes these smoky chats can age really well and get really interesting the closer we get to them. Katmandu, we're going to go through position by position, talk about some of the guys that I've nominated. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to start? I think we should start at fullback Mm. because uh, I I look at this position and I know there's one player in particular that you talk very highly about and I wonder if he's an option for you here. Yeah, I assume is that Scotty Drinkwater we're Correct. talking about? Drink Scotty Drink bloke. Scotty Drink bloke. That's yeah. one something I've picked up since um, yeah, like that. <laughs> since being in, in the CBA Center of Excellence. Yeah, it's good gear. Um look, I have got Scotty Drinkwater as a smoky. I'll be honest with you, I love Scott Drinkwater. And look, I talk about him a lot from a super coach point of view because he's just an attacking juggernaut. Personally, I'm not convinced if Drinky defensively is ready for state of origin just yet. Um, I think he's improving as time goes on, but I think defensively he's still got a little bit further to go and a little bit more to develop in his game. Still a very young guy, Scott Drinker. It feels like he's been around for ages, but off the dome, Kat, if you can maybe just have a look, I think he's only 25, 26, Scott Drinker. He might be a little bit older than that. Um, but he, he's never as old as I think he is. Drinking. Yeah, he's born in 97, so he's 26. He'll, he'll, 26, be, he'll yeah. be 27 in, in May though. He only played his 100th first grade game yeah, last wow. week, you know. Like it feels like he's been around for ages. But, yeah, I, I think Scotty Drinkwater, I think a lot of people will look at the attacking side of things and go, oh, it's a smoke. He has to be there. We have to pick him. Defensively, there are still a lot of things that Drinky needs to work on there, where he positions himself on the line, his communication. Um, you know, you, you saw a couple of weeks ago, Adam Reynolds really picked him apart with, with his kicking game as well. So I love Drinky and I think eventually he does play State of Origin. But I think right now he's probably not ready. A guy that I think is ready, and this all depends on James Tedesco, I think he'll be the fullback. A lot of people, Timmy mentioned the other day that he doesn't think he will be. Mm. I still think Madge will go with Teddy. I think Teddy's playing good enough footy this year to get picked. But if you were going to go with someone else, the obvious guys are Turbo, Latrell, these sort of guys. But Dylan Edwards has to be considered, especially when you're just talking combinations. If you're going to go Appy, Isaiah Yo, Nathan Cleary is your spine, it would make sense to go Edwards. You can still fit mm. Latrell and Turbo into the side somewhere else if you're going to pick both of those guys in the centre. So I think Edwards is the other one uh, that it's worth considering. But I personally think the pecking order will go Teddy, Turbo, 
and then they probably start to look at these guys realistically. Mm, I love the Edwards su- suggestion. Mm. He's so good. He is so good. And I know that he played for the Kangaroos at the end of last year and he didn't do too well. He was playing on the wing. He's not a winger. He's an f- out-and-out fullback. Mm. Um, and, you know, when you talk about state of origin, how tough it is and how much work you need to do, Dylan Edwards yeah, just exactly. personifies that. He is – when it comes to the, the mindset <laughs> required for something like state of origin, he embodies it. Does Dylan Edwards not feel like a guy that would play 10 years for Queensland yeah. and just do a job it's every so true. single fucking game yeah. he plays? He's got that, you know, when we talk about the the grit and that mongrel kind of approach that Queenslanders have, Dylan Edwards has that. If you told me that he was from Queensland, I'd believe you. Yeah. And, I mean, you can stack up all these other fullback options, Turbo, Teddy, Drinky. Latrell, if you combine all those guys together, um, I think it's four premierships as a grand total they've won. Dill's won three in the last <laughs> three years and he's a Clive Churchill medalist. I mean, we yeah. need to start to put some respect on the name of Dylan Edwards a little bit. Absolutely. What position do you want to do next, Captain Mendo? Let's, uh, let's head out to the wings. <laughs> the chicken... Chicken wing. <laughs> that, that wouldn't have been great rhyming slang, would it? It's, it's very unoriginal from me. Uh, the ding-a-ling. Let's head out there. Uh, the old Craig <laughs> wing. Um, obviously, there's a really obvious one here. Uh, Zach Lomax. He's been in incredible form. I know he wants to play center and whatever, but wing, I, I think Madge has to seriously mm. consider him. Uh, when state of origin games are just so tight, like I think back to – you know, those mid-2010 sort of period, Kat, and there was a stage there where, you know, even if we defended really, really well against Queensland, mm. fucking Thurston and Cronk would just kick it to the corner and Israel Flower would jump three foot above everyone, catch it and score. And sometimes you just can't really defend that sort of shit. Mm-mm. Lomax has got that aspect to him. I honestly think what Lomax is doing at the moment, obviously I, I personally think I- Izzy Flower probably the best in the air I've ever seen. If Lomax can keep doing what he's doing over the last eight weeks – for the rest of his career, he's going to seriously push as being like the best in the air we've ever seen. Mm. D- Daniel Tupu right up there, a number of guys. But what Lomax is doing at the moment is just off its head. He's doing a heap of work coming out of his end. He's a big body. That's what you want in your outside back. So I think Lomax is a serious, serious sniff uh, to make his origin debut this year. Right it. And if you were the Parramatta Eels, my God, you'd be absolutely yeah, stoked. Yeah, I was just, just going to say – yeah, imagine if you're a Dragons fan, you've been waiting like six years for this guy to finally reach his potential. As soon as he says he doesn't want to be there, he reaches his potential and plays origin football. Tough pill to swallow. Um, a guy that's probably not getting much attention, I think, is Suali. Um, playing center at the moment, but we, I think we all understand and know that he's a better winger. He's another one that wouldn't shock me. The only thing playing against Suali is that, of course, he's not going to be here next year. Mm. Uh, so is it really worth picking him if he's not going to be there for the future? Are you better off blooding Zach Lomax? Do you think uh, – well, I guess it's just a general question about the approach to picking sides for State mm. of Origin. Do you think that they're picked with longevity in mind or should it be based on the three games that year? Uh, I, I personally would take longevity into – my mm. thoughts, 100%. I don't know if they will, but mm. I think in this situation, if you're comparing Lomax and Suwali, like Suwali we know would do a job on the wing and do mm. well. Lomax is literally playing wing week in, week out, is absolutely killing it mm. and is going to be there into the future and is a little bit older and probably a little bit more ready for rep football. So, yeah. Yeah, Maybe I'll, you just Suwali when he gets back from rugby. Yeah, well, I mean, I, and I hope he does return very fucking quickly. Hopefully he wins a World Cup for the Wallabies and then comes back. Uh, but, yeah, I'm pretty confident Suwali plays Origin at one point throughout his career. Um, the other one I had there that's I, – I I don't think he'll be there. And you know what? I, I don't know if it's fair to call him a schmokey because he's already played a heap of Origin games. But I think Daniel Tupu has been in really good form for the Sydney Roosters as well out on that left wing. I don't think he'll get picked. But once again, if you have a couple of injuries and you've got the opportunity to blood – Lomax to a Lee or just go with the experienced guy in a game three or whatever, I'd be more than happy to throw Daniel Tupu another jersey because he's, he's been playing incredible footy for the Chooks this year. Yeah, love it. What's next? Let's head back into the centres. Mm. Centres, i got my boy from the Penrith Panthers, Isaac Tungo, defensively. I I am still – I have got a couple of question marks there. They're not massive question marks, but there are still a few there if I'm being completely honest. I think mm. that he's a real smoky there. Um I've written Stephen Crichton down here because 
you know, like we, he, I think he's played the last three series in a row or two series in a row, but he always gets in because of injuries, never in the automatic side. And personally, I'd be finding a spot for Critter. Oh, yeah. Um, and if it means that I have to maybe play Turbo on the wing and play Critter at centre, I'd actually be happy to do that. I think if you can fit Stephen Crichton in once again, you can blood a Suwali or a Lomax or you can pick Stephen Crichton who has time and time again proven on the big stages that he, that can. he can handle himself and do a job. He sure can. Um, oh, but I'd isn't be... it interesting that he's still only 23 uh, it's, but it's, he plays like a 27-year-old? It's incredible. Yeah. He has achieved more in his first five years of first grade than what the vast majority of guys do throughout their entire career. Yeah, careers. and it's, it's not it, – it's in part – being a part of such a great team, which is this era of the Penrith Panthers. But it is very much to do with the things he's achieved with that side too. He's he's a fantastic player. He definitely should be considered. Yeah, and, and that's the big thing, as you said, is being part of a great team. But they don't win the 2021 grand final without him. They don't win, in my opinion, the 2023 grand final. He scored a very important try, had a couple of forced dropouts as well to get them back into that mm. game. So he's an integral part and I think that he's really shown his class. As much as they're not going great, his performances for Canterbury so far this year. Yeah, but also when we say not going great, this is, in, I suppose, in comparison to where he's come from. But if you look at this dog side right now, they are performing a lot better than they have the past couple of seasons. That's fair. They're yeah. tracking a lot better. I think they're on a much more positive trajectory. And you'd have to say that recruiting players like Critter, like your burden a few seasons ago, those combinations are what's making the difference for them. Yeah, for sure. And I, I just think the people would look at where Canterbury are on the ladder and go, they're in 15th, what the fuck are you talking about? But it's very evident that their brand of footy is oh, a yeah, lot better. Definitely. And, you know, he walked into that club, a very famous club, Canterbury. They had two co-captains they picked from last year. They had guys like Max King, Josh Adokar and Serraldo looked at Critter and went, yeah. you're our leader, you're our skipper. And Serraldo knows what he's doing because he was on the training staff with yep. the Panthers in the, you know, when Critter was very much a part of that system. So he knew what he was signing up for. Yep, for sure. So Critter, I don't know, like he's realistically probably not a smoky, but I think he's a guy that a lot of people won't have in their team um, unless Turbo plays fullback and then I, I assume people would have Critter at centre. Uh, but I would I would love to see them just find a spot for Stephen Cr Crichton regardless. Yeah. And the role that honestly, like you could play Critter on the wing, you could play him at centre. Him and Tommy Turbo could swap throughout games. If they're defending on the same edge, it doesn't really matter. Um, um, they could swap and change and sort of roam and whatever. So mm -hmm. I, I just think he'd be a very good, very good pick as well, Critter. Uh, what's next, Catman? Do talk to me about the halves. Yeah, look, I'll be honest with you. I um, I'm not quite sure which direction we would go in the halves here. Um, I think that it's very evident that it'll be Nathan Cleary and Mitch Moses. Um, mm. I think that if one of them was injured, I've said it before, I would happily turn to Adam Reynolds to get his experience oh, yeah. in there. Um, you've got a guy like Cody Walker. Granted, he's out of form, but he has done a job there before. Outside of that, I just – I'm not really seeing any Smokies for New South Wales emerging. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you look at the guys that are playing good footy at the moment that are New South Wales halves, like, you know, a Galvin, for example, way too young. Luke Brooks is probably the closest guy, but I just – I can't see us throwing Luke Brooks into that cauldron. He's playing good footy for Manly, but mm. – I don't know <laughs> if he has the origin grit. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if I'd go that far, but what I would say is that I just don't know if it's in the best interest of Luke Brooks, just as he's finding his feet somewhere else and people are finally starting to come around and just see that he is actually a decent footballer to throw him That's into fair. that. It, like it, it, it feels like you're, you're throwing a child into the deepest end you possibly could. Well, it's, it just feels like it when you just start doing well at something and then someone goes, well, then here's – the most complicated version of that because yeah. you can do this, you can do that, but, you know, you need to really solidify and and do your best with A before you can move to B and I think he's a, at least a season away from from having to do that. And, and, and I, I genuinely think that in the future if we have injuries or whatever, I, I think Brooksy can be an option yeah. but I just don't think this year is the year because you know it's going to happen. Luke Brooksy could, Brooks could go out there and play a great fucking game. Um, we could get to the end of the series and we lose – Game three, which is decided by Golden Point, one point, and who are they going to fucking line? Luke Brooks. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah, you're exactly right. And we don't need that. He doesn't need that. New South Wales don't need that. Luke Brooks doesn't need that. Manly don't need that. Also, Brooks, if he was to go and play in that arena, fuck the halfback he'd be going up against. 
Daly Cherry Evans, he's quite. I just, oh, God. just, just a bit icky to me. I, I, I just don't think it's the play for Brooksy right now. So yeah. I think the halves they sort of pick themselves, and the experienced guys will be there. Will will come in if they have injuries. You've got uh, Adam Reynolds. You've got like a Luke Keary if you're desperate. Um, you you've got plenty of options there. So I, I'm you not do. really seeing any Smokies for the New South Wales half. I mean, we didn't even mention Jerome Lewis who's done the job last few this years is true. as well. Um, so yeah, I, I I think they're sweet there. Um, let's move into the forward pack, Cat. Where do you want to start? Let's go with our props. All right, let's start with our big boys in the middle. Uh, this is one that I feel very passionate about, and I actually think right now he would be in my side. It's Terrell May. Uh, he has started this season incredibly well uh, in a Roosters pack that is absolutely stacked. I don't know if you would call him the most important forward in that side. You'd probably go with like Fisher Harris or Lindsay Collins, but I think he's the most valuable guy in that pack. Yeah. I think he's the guy that can just break a game of football open at any given moment. You saw it during the final series last year. You've seen, seen it for the Roosters this year. He's just doing incredible things. So personally, I would absolutely love to have Terrell May on my bench for New South Wales, and I can already tell you the interchange that I would make, Kat. As soon mm. as I bring Payne Haas off for 20 minutes, I said to Terrell May – this needs to be the biggest and baddest 20 minutes of your career. Go out there and rip and tear. Let Payne Haas have a bit of a spell, then bring Haas back on. And there might even be a five or 10-minute period where you leave them both on at the same time. And I really think the Ooh. Queensland side missing Tino, missing Tommy Gilbert, I think we could just terrorise with these two oh, through yeah. the middle. I completely agree. I was going to ask you your thoughts on that Tino matchup and who – I mean – where we're lucky in that sense. Mm. Well, no, that's a terrible thing to say. Yeah, he's well, for it is a terrible thing to say, but we are very lucky but on that front. Yeah, you need to take advantage of those things, 100%. just as they would if Cleary was yeah. injured. Same or, as they or have whatever. the last few years when Turbo and Latrell have been injured. It yeah, is exactly. what it is. Sometimes it falls your way. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, so yeah, I would love to see Terrell May in there. The other one that I think would be is a bit of a sniff, and I probably have him a little bit closer to this side than what other people would. Is Mitch Barnett? Uh, Mitch Barnett has, uh, like you talk about screws loose. Mitch Barnett was 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 missing a couple of screws when he was born. I've loved watching his career. He used to just be a complete nut, a nutcase that was a liability that could lose you a game at any moment. Andrew Webster has taken him under his belt and he has turned him into a premier front row mm. forward in our game. I love Mitch Barnett. I would be more than happy to have him in, in my side. And this is what scares me about Fisher-Harris going over there. They are just two out-and-out alphas that mm. no one wants to fuck with. The beauty of Mitch Barnett, he's been playing in the front row this year at a very high click, absolutely competing with the best front row forwards in the game. He can play on the edge in an absolute heartbeat. He has played centre before, so he can cover a heap of positions. He is a goal-kicking forward. He just... He just offers so much Mitch Barnett and he's the one guy that when there's a brouhaha or it gets a little bit tense, you know he's not going to hide away. You know mm. he's going to stand up and run head first into it. He's one of those guys, Mitch Barnett, he just he, – he puts his head where most wouldn't want to put their foot. He is just a maniac and I know it probably won't happen but, geez, I think we could do so much worse – than to have Mitch Barnett and Terrell May coming off our bench. Mm -hmm. I just think they could terrorise. Oh, yeah, be good watch that. The other guy that I've got there, he has played Origin. He's sort of been dicked around a little bit over the last few years, is Stefano from the West Tigers. Um, I personally probably wouldn't have him. I think he's probably still a year or so away despite playing Origin last year. Uh, but his form at the moment for the West Tigers, it, it's undeniable. He has been absolutely killing it. So a guy that they will consider, I'm very confident on it. The other thing is too that I would assume, yes, Madge would have coached him at the West Tigers. So he would already have a relationship with him as well. So that might play a role. Mm. Uh, I mean, it might go for him. It might go against him. Yeah, he wasn't exactly. playing his greatest footy back then, to be fair, Stefano. So God knows. Uh, but we'll see how that one plays out. But I wouldn't put Stefano out of there as well. What's next, Katmandu? Let's go to our Fs. I see a few options here. Second row forwards, yeah. I, this is the one that I had the most names written down for. And look, obviously you pick two to start. You have one coming off the bench. Um, and I, I think most of these spots kind of pick themselves the New South Wales Blues. But I can see a Smokey getting in here somewhere. I think the most obvious one is Ola Kawatu. He's just played so good over the last two years and potentially should have been there last year. I, my only worry with Olukawatu was that five weeks before Origin last year, it was essentially, okay, who's going to take this jersey, Hudson Young or Olukawatu? 
And in my opinion, I love Oluquatu, but he played some of his worst footy I've seen mm. during that period. So it really handed the jersey to Hudson Young, who I would still have in my team, to be fair. I know some people are a little bit iffy on Hudson Young. I would still have him in there. He reminds me so much of Greg Burb when he used to play for New South Wales. It's not even funny. Uh, didn't have his greatest series last year, but I just – I look at Hudson Young and I go, you are what Origin is all about. Mm -hmm. You're the sort of guy that we need to sort of start to turn this. Tough. He's got upside to him. I would happily take Hudson, but I think Olaquatu is going to be there and thereabouts. I think another guy, obviously Hudson Young, I've got him on this list as well. Um, a guy that I think has been playing fantastic footy who I don't think will be there, but I, I would like to just throw his name in there, is Jackson Ford from the New Zealand Warriors. Um, Jerry Gong Kid, I've spoken about him for years with you guys that I, I just keep saying, what the fuck are the Dragons doing with this guy? How the hell isn't he in their starting forward pack, let alone on their bench? It's just outrageous. He gets to the Warriors, he gets a good coach, puts his arm around him and he absolutely kills it. He's, he gets through so much work. He runs some of the best lines in rugby league. He's got a couple of errors in him. That's always been my problem with Ford. Mm. But we haven't really seen that over the last month or so. The start of the season, he was he's had a lot of errors. Last month, from my memory, he's been really good. So Ford, I want to throw up there. The other one I want to throw up there, Sean Bloor from the Melbourne Storm. Just keep an eye on him. Uh, he was, you know, captain of... A lot of New South Wales under 16s, under 18s coming through. He's always been a favourite in that system. Starting to get a real opportunity with Melbourne and looking really good. Um, he's obviously injured at the moment. I'm not sure how long he's out for, so I might rule him out. But I'll tell you what, Zach Hosking was just about the form forward of the comp for the first few weeks. Uh, tough as nails. Old man had the nickname of the mule, if that tells you anything about mm -hmm. the Hosking family. Um, I think Zach would have been a really, really nice smoky to bring off your bench. Another guy, similar to Mitch Barnett, can cover a few positions. He can play middle, he can play edge. He's played centre for the Penrith Panthers at a high click as well. Would have been handy. But I think the big smoky, and it's really weird to call this guy smoky when he's played 12-odd origins, but I think at the start of the year, no one had him in their team. Angus Crichton is starting to cook, Kat. I uh, mm. I think he's going to lock down that left edge spot for the Sydney Roosters, and he's a guy that I could really see springing into origin calculations uh, over the next few months. And, you know, obviously it's been well publicised and whatnot, and we're not going to get in it because like many other people out there, it's none of our fucking business. But Angus has had a bit of a tough trot over the last year or so, and he's a, one of the good guys of rugby league. I caught up with him in, in Vegas on a couple of occasions. Always ha has a lot of time for me, Angus. I've always been a huge fan, and uh, I would love to see him back in Sky Blue, Cat. Yeah, I think everything at the moment is in his favour, at mm. least to be considered, and he's got the history too. He's got the connection. You talk longevity, he has that. Yep. So uh, big point out, I'd love to see Ola Kwatu make it. I've told you that he's one of my favourite players to watch. Yeah. I, I don't think I ever appreciated the role of the 2RF until taking more time to look at what players like Ola Kwatu are doing and then, yeah, the ability to, to score a try and do all of that but also just to fight through the pressure of five guys holding you down. Yeah. I just know I'd be concussed, so I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, he's sort of in that like Billy Army kick out sort of mold. Yeah, isn't he? exactly. And just I, like know, a wall. Yeah. And I, I assume Liam Martin will be on one edge. So the other spot that I, I want a guy on that edge, similar to like what the Panthers do with kick out, what Queensland will do with Dave Fafita when you're sort of coming out of your own end. It's great to have a guy that you can just go a two ball shift to and you just mm. know they're going to generate momentum. And Olakawatu is a classic. I, mean, one I of don't those. know how a player can gain more momentum once they've been <laughs> yeah. held down by five massive dudes yeah. but anyway he's a proper monster Olakawato yeah alright um, let's go Next yeah so position. those are the second row forwards a few guys to choose from there uh, but I I don't know I've got a feeling about Angus over the next few weeks that he jumps into contention What's next? Tell me, you tell me what's left. Well, we've got the lock forwards here. Jersey 13, uh, probably my favourite position on the field. And look, New South Wales, we've got so many of these guys, it's not even funny, whether it be, you know, Cam Murray and Isaiah Yeo. I think both have to be in the team somewhere. Um, I think both will be picked and one will be 13 and one will come off the bench. Maybe Cam Murray plays on the edge. That's going to be the tough thing with all those second rowers that we mentioned because we've got two such – Two such good – I can't even say this sentence. Two 13s that are so good, one of them will probably end up on the edge. It'll probably be Cam Murray, I'd say. It's where mm. it's going to be hard to get these guys in. But just some other guys I want to mention. Cam McInnes, I've said it time and time again. If he was a Queenslander, he would have already played 20 oh, yeah. Origins. I would love to see him get picked. I love that when Madge picked his trade-on squad for the start of the season that Cam McInnes was one of them. That just said to me, we're, start, we're, we're turning a new leaf here. Yeah. 
you should have been picked years ago. You might not be the most talented. You might not be the fastest, but you're the toughest guy. You, we know you will not let us down. So Cam McInnes, I think, is a smoky to get into the side. Might need an injury or two, but I reckon he's a chance. I'd be willing to bet that at Cam McInnes at some point is like an 18th or 19th man in yeah. this Origin well, Series. You, like you said, you already know that Madge has noticed him and, yeah. and, and can see his potential. Yeah, and the other thing that I like about McInnes, and it's probably it's probably working against him now, to be fair, but a year ago I said, you know what, Queensland run with two hookers. I would love to see us start with Cam McInnes at hooker, let him get through that early defensive work um, and then bring on, yeah, Appy or someone. But because Appy and Robson are going so well, mm. it's probably hard to ignore it. Just jumping back to hooker too, I actually forgot a great smokey, Mitch Kenny. Oh, yeah. Uh, I probably think they'll go with Appy and Robson, but Mitch Kenny has been there, done it on the big stages. He is tough as nails. You can play him at lock as well, which you can't really do with Appy. You can maybe do it with Robson. But if I had to pick one of Robson and Appy to play at lock for a, a little bit of time, I'd go with Mitch Kenny. So another smoky there. Uh, lock forward, Cam McInnes. I've thrown in Josh Curran. Shock. Yeah, you, shock. Do you like, like Josh Curran? I'm I don't big, think he's made it clear enough. Big Josh Curran guy. I have been for a long time. Yeah. Um, I think he would do a fantastic job, Josh Curran. So uh, probably he's probably too far down the pecking order, but he's got nice offload. He's got attacking upside. He's shown for Canterbury over the last few weeks. If you're going to throw him in the middle and say tackle and run at everything, he'll do it for you. So Josh Curran I like. Um, now this guy is a long way down the pecking list, but I've been really impressed with him to start this season. And I think Origin's well and truly passed him. But I just want to give him a little shout out because I think as far as 13s go, he's played some really good footy. Tommy Eisenhuth for the St. George of the Wild Dragons. I mean, very impressed with him. I think he's at slim to no hope to play Origin this year or to be in a squad or anything. But he's just one guy I wanted to give a mention to because I think if we had mass injuries – He's another one of these guys. He can play middle, edge, centre. He can sort of just do it all, Tommy Eisenhuth. Uh, coming out of the Melbourne – he was at the Penrith Panthers system, went down to the Melbourne Storm, now at the Dragons, and has sort of found a home. You can tell that Shane Flanagan obviously really likes him. So uh, just a guy I wanted to mention, but as I said, probably a long shot there. Are we done, Kat? I think we're done. Is it our origin schmokies? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how – whether or not Madge watched this and, and we see a few of these guys make the lineup. Oh, Madge would have watched this. Yeah. I have no doubt. Madge no, but I mean, this. how many notes has he taken? Oh, he would have taken plenty. Okay. Yeah. His, uh, his notebook would have got a workout, his little black book mm. would have got a serious workout. Um, all right. How good. So uh, good. That, that episode is brought to you by Ned's guys. Make sure you go and check out the app. You can follow along with my profile, the boys from about even all that sort of stuff, some cracking stuff in there. Follow along with all our bets throughout each and every week of the NRL season. Obviously all of our prices and everything subject to change as the week goes on. Cause the NRL is wild cat always changing always updating, always market mm -hmm. movers in the Neds app and whatnot. So make sure you go and download the app, guys, and have a look at it there. Thanks for joining us once again on the Rugby League Guru Podcast. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.